Hey, I'm Derek. And I'm Noah. And you're listening to A Bite Of. Where we take our current favorite pop culture obsession and enjoy it one nibble at a time. Ooh, sixth nibble of X-Men 97. Super excited. Life and life, life and death. I keep wanting to say life and death. Life and death. Life, death, part two. A two-parter of a two-parter? Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. It's very, this is a very split in half episode. <laughs> We're getting another of another. Yes. Ooh. Okay. Before we get into it, make sure you're subscribed on YouTube, on your podcast app, leave a review. We got a Patreon. We got a Discord. We got all those wonderful things that you can connect with us on. So go explore. Scroll down in the show notes. It's all there. We're recording this right before we finally take a vacation to Disney that we've had for a long time been pushed because of various things but we're very excited so you'll be with us in disney if you follow us on socials so follow us on socials support your indie queer podcasters whoa please it got real yeah it got real (laughs) (laughs) it's it's life death (laughs) so a lot to talk about yes okay spoilers yes always give that spoiler alert we're big fans of the spoiler alert Big fans. So before we like start the episode, I did want to address like three little tiny things from the last episode. Oh, wow. that have been brought to attention slash didn't mention. I meant to mention last X Men ninety seven episode was so traumatic that we were literally processing it on air. Yeah, and we took like a day or two to really process it, and we still didn't fully process we, it. We really did it. I think rewatching it just opened all the wounds again. Yeah, and we were just completely messed up. <laughs> So, yes, we did see The Watcher in that episode. Did we mention it? No. no. But we did see it. Um, one of our lovely listeners, Rainbow Hair Girl, Tommy, can turn as flat as paper. Oh, is that what it is? That's, <gasps> yeah. So now we have thank our answer. You. Now you have it. So thank, thank you. you. <laughs> oh. And then the Sentinel um, kaiju thing that we talked about is called a wild Sentinel. So, oh, the big beetle thing right oh like a sentinel factory thank you listeners yeah, for thank, all your help yeah thank you for keeping us in check also that's when it's like just do that we we don't mind that we yeah. have so much to talk about we yeah. did like an hour-long episode and we still missed stuff yeah it's just fine yeah it, it's like you know when you're just like so into something that you're talking about all the fine details go away and then after the fact it's like oh we yeah it, i mean these episodes are kind of they're like weekly check-ins almost and we used to be very like detail oriented with our episodes and now we're just like having fun you know we still go deep but we don't go as deep yeah there's a difference i think between going deep versus going line by line of the script which is sort of what we used to do and also being very traumatized it's fine <laughs> okay so this week so let's Official spoilers for this week's episode of X-Men 97. All right. Let us officially take a bite of X-Men 97, episode six, Life, Death, Part Two, directed by Chase Conley and written by Charlie Feldman. Storm faces the adversary and her darkest fears to save Forge from the demons spreading poison and to regain her connection to the elements. Light years away, Professor X is getting his groove back in space trying to win over Lelandra's sister Deathbird by renouncing his X-Men to prove he is loyal to the Shi'ar. The episode is for the birds. <laughs> bird, bird, bird. Birds are weird. No, we're not doing that. I can't. There's birds in both stories. I would have rather have you done a bird fact than do that. Well, ruin my <laughs> finale, why don't you? <laughs> oh, spoiler. <laughs> so when we covered uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier... Derek, we used to have special segments at the end of our episodes, and Derek did a bird fact for every episode. I loved it. People to this day still mention that. It's by the, the way. song. It yeah. was the song. It's another edition of Bird Fact. Yeah. <laughs> and the fact for this episode is that there's just birds in both parts of the story. Yeah. I, well, they are. Actually, there's a, a evolution of birds and a demonic bird. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. What did you think of this episode? General thoughts on both of them. We will then go to. The Shi'ar, and then we'll talk about Storm. I think that this episode is not a standalone in the sense that, so like when you read part two of a book series, we always ask the question, does it stand alone in the sense of, did you have to read the first one to see the second one, to read the second one? In this case, 
I think that you needed to know an entire lore of a race in order to truly understand what was going on here. Or watch the show 30 years ago and still remember it. Right, exactly. And so Noah will be like, did you remember that? And I'll be like, well, I haven't watched it since I'm eight. So no, I I don't remember that. (laughs) So uh, I think I was a little confused at first. I'm glad we watched it a second time because it sort of clarified things. Because the first time I was trying to put those puzzle pieces together. So I think it was a good episode. But I think that you really needed the backstory to understand what was going on. Yeah, this one does throw a lot at you, especially with the Shi'ar. And then it has... I mean, even just seeing how many different types of aliens are there witnessing everything Mm. is a lot. Mm. Um, There's a lot of lore that goes back into it. But I, when you said that, you know, I feel like you need to, it's not like a standalone. I'm like, because it's a part two. But I got what you meant. (laughs) No, I agree. I, I liked it. I do wish one of my criticisms with the first Life, Death, Part One slash Motendo was that I almost feel like the Life, Death's Stuff should have just been one longer episode or a longer first part and a standalone second part only because like some of this stuff is like I'm willing to like put it aside but like their love is just like so quick and they're like yeah. soulmates I'm like oh, I, I love them and I believe it because I know it but mm-hmm. I'm curious what general audiences feel about it but I loved this episode I think it's I didn't know, realize how much I missed the intergalactic side of the X-Men stuff until we got this. Mm. Um, I loved the kookiness. Yeah. One of the things that I appreciated in looking at this is that we, we were kind of questioning, like, why did life, death one happen? And then we had remember it. And then we had this. But it's all about the timing of what's going on in these worlds. Right. So it wouldn't have made sense for it to be life, death one, life, death two, have them have their powers back. And then have everyone die, right? Right. So it's like, this had to all be happening at the same time. So that's why they kind of brought Life, Death 2 after Remember It. Yeah, and I also like that episode five, how traumatic it was, and we're still recovering from it, is like a mid-season finale. Mm. And I like that it took a step back from it for a minute. That way we could still kind of like feel those emotions. And we do get that part at the end both both parts at the end where it all comes back together so thank you for that let us go to space for a minute and forget all our troubles yeah let's just watch some other war we don't yeah. know about like this is fine <laughs> so speaking of space we got the shiar we got the kree and we got professor x there's a war shiar kree i loved every second of anything with the shiar from the opening battle sequence, which looked amazing, from Deathbird zooming into that ship and making all those people fly out of it, fighting Ronin, ugh, the Imperial Guard, Gladiator, I just, all of it. I loved every second of it. I mean, she really does sort of cement herself as a foe when she blasts through there. It's just like grabbing people by the throat, putting her heel through people's faces. I mean, she's just a badass. Yeah, I... Questioned at first why she wore six inch heels, but then when she stabbed Ronan's cheek, I was like, yeah, makes makes sense. Also, she can wear what she wants. It's for death. Seeing Gladiator fully in his like overpowered, amazing form is awesome to see. He is just like that in the comics. I love seeing him in this light. I geeked out. Also, of note of the people in the Imperial Guard, there's quite a few people, but just wanted to point out Cyclops' brother is there, Vulcan. His daddy on the Star Jammers goes into space. He has siblings mm. out there. So I just wanted to point that little tiny Easter egg out. They have those glowing eyes in common, <laughs> those two, you know, <laughs> young men. So the I like actually like these two episodes together. Do I wish Life Death was a little longer? Yes. But I liked both of them together because they almost mirror each other in certain ways. Because the Shi'ar are, are like imperialistic, they're conquerors and everything like that. And the stuff that Forge and storm talk about a lot of the stuff especially his land and his people were Mm. conquerors and colonizers so it's an interesting viewpoint to see from both sides you have the conquerors over here and you have the people that had to deal with people like that and the white lie of it all Mm. fantastic writing in this by the way amazing yeah i think that uh these two stories although they seem very uh disparate they actually do go along with each other quite well and i think that there's something to be said about Storm needing to really face her feel fears and demons to be regain her powers and Professor X kind of ignoring all of his responsibilities, you know, because he was 
gone. We all thought he was dead. We saw his leather-bound last will and testament. Yeah, that, that's a good point. So, well, it, okay. So it's it's one of those things where it's like, I mean, they have to have known he was alive, right? Because I don't think Professor X would necessarily abandon everybody without telling them. Like, was there some type of conversation where it's like, this has to happen? But we finally get that answer. The last episode of the original animated series we now know that Professor X is not dead mm. and they did take him. Lalandra took him, nursed him back to health. And she's like, I love you. You love me. We're getting married. <laughs> Again, another very whirlwind romance that we didn't <laughs> see the beginning of. We just have to trust that it's real. Um, I do think it's interesting that he has, you know, in some ways really given himself over to these people. He's wearing their armor. He's dressing like them. He is a part of this sort of, you know, grand gesture to prove that he is going to be thinking of their best, you know, efforts and everything. So it's really interesting to see Professor X in this way and having been gone from the X-Men for a year and not even knowing what's going on with them. Yeah, well, until he does know. Mm. Um, I, I liked it in this light because you know, being an X-Men fan and reader, do I think this is out of character for him? No. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, he does very questionable things all the time. Like leaving everything to Magneto? Right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, like that. Um, I'm, I'm very curious to see what's going to happen when he does go back to the X-Men, especially with what happened in Genosha. Um, and if there was some type of conversation at some point when he was taken or whatever that may be. So, but I liked, I didn't like, but I liked that even though he was with these other people, the Shi'ar, they still didn't accept him. He's a Terran. And even worse than that, he's, he's like a mutant. mutant. He's underneath the Terran. Yeah. So you have these like imperialistic people even looking down on him. And it's like, you can't be with our bird DNA. You need, you can't be here. You're not going to do it. Do you see this hair? <laughs> you will never have this. Well, Baldy. you can't. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I, I was, sorry, not to get too silly about this, but I was really enamored by their hair. Slash oh, it's amazing. Feathers. I couldn't figure out what it is. And the fact that she took her metal, you know, headdress off and it was still that bizarre, like arrow shaped flat head thing. I'm like, who, what is this group of people? Who are they? She are. <laughs> they are she They are evolved from birds. <laughs> but like, yeah. And, and like, so <laughs> uh, no, because it's like some of them are, but then we have, we remember that they're, in, you know, they're imperialistic. They've taken over oh, yeah. other planets. So they're well, gladiators from a right. planet that has been conquered by them. He's right. not she are, but he's from a product of them. Yeah. So it's, you know, but there's, the people with the hair. Are, yeah. They're very fancy birds. I don't know what your question is. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's, it's, I guess, you know what? It's not a question. It's more of a conversation about how they present themselves and the customs to which they style their hair. I love it. I absolutely love <laughs> I'm it. I'm not saying that I don't love it. It's just, I, I was enamored by it. Sometimes I wasn't paying attention to anything that they were saying because I was trying to figure out what was going on with their hair. So silly. <laughs> <laughs> and the eye makeup, it's very like Thundercats esque. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's around like, the same time. Yeah, it's like, like that 80s, 90s feel to yeah. the cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> I love them. I there was a cartoon in the late 80s, early 90s. I, I'm blanking on the name now. I'm gonna say Silverhawks, but I don't think that's right. But they looked very much like them. Hmm. And my brother and I got a pair of their pajamas for Christmas. And when you put your arms out, you had wings. Oh, cool. So cool. That's impractical, but cool for a kid. But I looked amazing. Yeah. My brother and I, there's a picture of us at Christmas like this. I want to find it. It was so good. You were a Shi'ar. I was. Even back then. I did have hair. So yeah. just that. <laughs> Imagine if you styled it. Right. Way. Okay. Anyway, away from the hair of the Shi'ar, I knew you were going to be like so fixated on the hair. Listen, the, I do. there's a deep story here. I completely get it. But sometimes we have to just look at the trivial and talk about these things because they're important to me. Speaking of trivial, did you catch when Ronan called Deathbird a pigeon? I sure did. I'm amazing. I know it's like an insult, but it's really funny. Meanwhile, Deathbird, she's she's got a sharp tongue. Oh yeah, that one. Milky Way Ghetto. Milky Way Ghetto. One of the best lines oh. ever. You know what? <laughs> I, I know she's the villain, but she was the entertainment baby. She's really interesting. I 
again, I love villains that are like this. And she has like a tried and terrible like history with the X-Men. And, you know, she's worked with Apocalypse and in Apocalypse is Promise. I actually think that's what the episode was called. So she's tried her way. I like in this one that she's trying her like hand at being really good with the Imperial Guard and then trying to start a coup. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, I like to think about, in my mind, her legal name is Deathbird. They named her sister Lalandra, and then they said, ah, beautiful little Deathbird. Well, I, I, she has another name, <laughs> but they call her Deathbird. <laughs> I also, I can never remember Lalandra's full name. It's like Lalandra Malal is like, ah, uh, uh. <laughs> Yeah, Empress. <laughs> the Empress. She's very um, maiden. You know what yeah. I mean? She's always like, but Charles, you must show your love for me. You oh, know? she's not that much. Well, she's she's performative, right? Mm. And I, the, the conversation that they had, I do like that she said it's all a performance. Like, it's what you put on that's leading, right. especially as an emperor. And that was the point of her sort of making that big pronouncement that she and Charles were going to get married. In and, the middle of a battle. Right. <laughs> I know. And and I love that, you know, Deathbird's like, okay. But... I'll put this on Haas. Also, yeah. d- did you see when like the hologram showed in the fields of all of those like horse people working? It's yeah, like, like they're slaves. This is not great. No, it's not great. It's not a good place. No, we don't like it. But Charles wanted to marry into it. So I don't know. This is what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't, you know, uh, I think when we think of Charles, I, you know, the, the common person like myself, when we think of Charles Xavier, we think of like the leader, the, yeah. the correct the righteous, you know, and then when you see him doing these things, you're like, what is this guy's deal? He's one of those complicated characters where he thinks that certain ways are the best ways for all people or mutant kind. And it's not necessarily the best way. And sometimes he does have his own motives. So, mm. you know, he is a person and he makes mistakes, a lot of mistakes. Yeah, it's interesting. It's but interesting. His greatest ability is being a teacher. And that was one of my favorite things that they showcased in this. Because, yeah, he's a very well-adept telepath, but he's a teacher. And he schooled them in this. Literally. <laughs> Literally. That scene was so cool. When he said, class is in session, and it showed his face on different groups of people when they did it. Amazing. He I said, the animation in this is just so good. Yeah. So good. I like the apples. I like him giving out demerits. <laughs> he's like shut your face like death how- bird. <laughs> eat this apple raise your hand <laughs> you know the white lies in the colonist Derek the hair <laughs> this is who I am <laughs> no I love it because I wouldn't have thought about that at all yeah this is why we do this <laughs> he was doing cool teacher leaning on the desk eating an apple during class and also to think too that he's the one that made the astral plane right he's he's materializing everything in it. And he's like, you know, what would be great is if I'm eating an apple and also not just holding it, eating it. And you hear him gulp. I'm mm-hmm. like, you just ate a mind apple. You said you ate. Yeah. <laughs> he ate in that green suit. Ooh, crisp. Yeah. <laughs> I like that he had a chalkboard, but it was also sort of a smart board because he could make animations happen on it when he was explaining to them why they're horrible. Yeah. It was a good explanation though. I, I think, think so. That this, you know, the, the Shira people are like, education is indoctrination. No, I mean, it's not really how it is. And you should foster critical thinking. Mm. It's very clear education is a good thing. Right. Instead of cutting off these people at the knee, they could have sprouted into very successful right. civilizations. A lot of people need to hear that. Education and melding of coexistence is good, messy, but good. Knowledge is power. And that's the thing is that even when he's explaining this Lord Araki, he goes, well, they'll just get confused. They won't understand thinking that they're all morons. Yeah. Might is right. White lie. I can't with these people. It's, it's, I love I keep calling them people. I, I don't know what they're called. They're humanoid dish with feathers. The Shiraz. Yeah. She are <laughs> the glops. No, stop. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the, um, yeah, I, I think it's really important that the, these kind of conversations and themes are in an X-Men show because this is what the X-Men are about. So people are about treating them. And before I lose track of this, I loved that in the classroom setting, how he was like, who made up these rules? Like, why do we need to do this? And Alondra was like, well, we did playing make-believe. 
They just put into perspective everything. Like, who who gave you this power? You think you have this power. Right. You don't have this power. Ugh, it's so good. Fantastic. And then the world goes topsy-turvy. And so we good. see basically a field of death and the messenger of death is Gambit. Makes it interesting, though, that he didn't see Magnus. He didn't see Eric Magneto. So is he alive? I guess we'll find out. Mm. But, you know, Magneto and Eric have Eric. Magneto and Charles have such a strong connection. I'm not saying he doesn't with Gambit, but you, you would think that either both of them would be there or he would see Magneto over Gambit. I mean, maybe it's something to be said of him being the teacher and this being the people that he is, you know, his students. Mm. And there is one of his students who is dead. Yeah. Whereas, you know, Magneto is kind of a colleague. He's like a brother, though. Brother, colleague. (laughs) Colleague, brother. It is really cool, though, that his telepathic abilities just like subconsciously warned him about what happened in Genosha. That's really cool. Yeah. I mean, I like. And again, I think it's the timing of these episodes. I think that we have to, although we are watching them, you know, kind of linearly or or in a chronological order, these last two episodes are happening at the same time. Right. So we almost have to wonder of when those Sentinels landed and when Gambit died, that's when it came through. You don't have to say it again. Well, he did. (laughs) They they murdered him. (laughs) Were you going to (laughs) whisper? I I was going to scream it, but then... I didn't want the levels to go crazy. They murdered Gambit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they did. They said, remember it. We murdered him. <laughs> we, we won't forget it. Trust us. Never. <laughs> um, anything you want to say about the Charles stuff before we go on to Storm and Forge in the desert? I just think that if he arrives back and some people don't have some cold shoulders towards him, I'm going to be annoyed. Mm. I mean, they're... What? Yeah. I mean, I, I am very curious to see this reunion to see what happens. Yeah. Um, and also, are they just going to like send him by himself or people going to go with him? I'm also interested to see if, you know, again, so one of the things that we talked about last episode is seeing how Mr. Sinister is, is going to come back. And we do get that answer. Uh, I'm interested to see if the Shi'ar are going to come back. Mm-hmm. You know, is Lalandra and, or, and Gladiator, are they going to come and help the X-Men? Maybe. That's a hard ask. At least Gladiator. Yeah, maybe. I like that guy. He's really cool. (laughs) He was on, he's uh, been in the Guardians of the Galaxy before. Pretty cool. Mm. Pretty cool guy. Okay. So on to Storm and Forge, the life death part two part of this episode. I loved it. I think, you know, even though we got a very shortened down, condensed version of her journey to get her powers Mm. back, what we got was fantastic. Playing on her fears of, also fears she can't control like phobias and also fears of what society has put onto her is genius yeah. work. And it's all in the form of the adversary, which was Forge's demon to begin with that latched onto her. Mm. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. I think there's something to be said here of trying to convince yourself that a lie is true, you know, and, and the adversary brings that conversation that Storm had with Jean up a lot and saying that, you know, you wish that you could be human. What would it be like? It would be okay. Maybe that's what you would want. And And she's tired. And she's tired because she's been defending her existence, her existence, her entire life. And so she's just tired. And sometimes we say things to try and give ourselves ease, but it's a fantasy, right? It's not something that you really want to come true. But I think there's that thing of, okay, the, I will say the lens that I see the world in is as a gay man, right? But when you're younger, maybe not out of the closet yet, you're going, no, I'm straight. It's okay. I'm straight. I believe it. It's going to be okay. That's who I am. And so it's fighting those lies that you tell yourself in order to protect yourself. Right. And I think Storm is caught in that. And unfortunately, she has a demon that is playing on that as well. Yeah, it's like the executioner's bullet was the catalyst for her to lose her powers. And then it was just her keeping herself from that this whole time, Mm -hmm. which is awful. Great storytelling. Yeah. But awful for somebody to feel that way about themselves. Thank God she has forged with her. You know, I, I loved him showing his shamanistic abilities. Um, they, I like that it was kind of MCU ified. Yeah. Almost to tie it together. It was very Dr. Strange. Even though this is like not in the MCU, 
kind of is like, but is and isn't, but having his powers kind of mimic what sorcery looks like. Pretty cool. Absolutely. Let's talk about Forge for a second. Okay. He is a mechanical genius. He has abs for days. Oh yeah. He wears short shorts. Oh yeah. He's a good cook. Yep. And he's a shaman. Yeah. How about that? Amazing. He's a total package, TP. Yeah, he's fantastic. I mean, he and Storm, oh. Yeah. Power couple. I love them together, and I think that them together, seeing them in this adversity, um, (laughs) is really cool to see how they work together, right? And I think the strengths of a couple is what happens when you're put into dire things like this, or hard things, right? Even though he was infected with that demonic bite, he still helped. He still wanted to show her where the stuff was to help himself, right? Her fear of claustrophobia being showed multiple times in this episode, so good. It made me feel claustrophobic. Yeah. Especially when she was in that coffin, which was one of the most intense scenes I think we've had in this show. Her saying, like, I can't breathe, showing the faces of her family members, talking to her. Ugh. It's really good, sad, yeah. terrible, but yeah. good. And, I, and you know, again, I think we're playing on the idea of she is the one that is putting herself in this box. She is the one that is trapping herself because the adversary is just a manifestation of her own fears and her own block. Right. And so she's torturing herself in a way this entire time. It's also voiced by the same person, which is another added layer of genius for this. Yeah, great. I mean, a lot of times we are our own worst enemies, right? The voice inside our head is the one that is always beating us down. And so it's just being depicted as the adversary, but we are our own adversaries. Yeah, I like that. Mama. What are demons, if not reflections of our worst parts? Quote. (laughs) Okay, but to get to the big part of this episode, I think the episode that made all of us very happy was her getting her powers back her deciding to overcome her adversary overcome her demons using that demon to then create a costume that is not only classic and like og storm but glorious in this animation seeing her fly through the air fly with the horses create cyclones oh using the same music when she first came out after cyclops said, show me the forecast. And she came out in her Omega level threat. They used the same music when she got her powers back. Genius. Okay. So good. (laughs) So I kept playing in my head the theme song. The So for the first four seasons of Sailor Moon, they used the same song. But in the fifth season, the final season, Sailor Stars, they used this song that is so good. And it goes like, Maki Night. At it and they like fly through the air and mm-hmm. she has wings. I, I just was hearing that as she was blasting through the air. It's such transforming. a moment. Oh yeah. my gosh, it's such a moment. And you know, seeing her be free again, right? She in that moment, right before it, she's locked in that type space in the darkness. And then she bursts free and she is one with the elements again. She's even with the thundering hooves of of the horses it's just such a beautiful depiction of her coming into herself again she can feel the wind storm got her groove back baby yeah it's amazing she looks phenomenal i love that you know there's a moment in when she gets her powers back and she kind of is like she kind of stops a little bit and like kind of like turns and looks but she's like kind of walking it's like a pose Killed it. Yeah. Queen. I'm sorry. It's just giving me so many magical girl vibes. You know what I mean? It's like when Sailor Moon gets a new costume, you want (laughs) to like you just can't stop. It's just too exciting when your characters get new costumes because they are now powered up. You're like, yes. Yeah. I I implore everybody to go on TikTok if you have it or reels and look at edits of it because people have put phenomenal music um, to her getting our powers in her flight scene i mean i know a lot of people have said like oh this is like man of steel i know i mean it, i think that's the easiest thing to attribute it to because that's like superman becoming superman that's like him t- taking his first flight and stuff like mm. that it's like the same thing right it's like this is her freedom flight like this is her accepting herself knowing her doubts and knowing her fears and knowing her adversary and being okay with that and overcoming it yes 
And I think there's something interesting it's to better be, than Man of Steel, just saying. And I, I think there's something to be said <laughs> about someone who has always been so self-assured, who has always been so confident in knowing who she is to see her play through this doubt and, and this fear to come out on the other side as an even better version of herself, a stronger, newer version of herself. You know, to see Storm go through that, I think she is really, I don't know, she's really solidifying herself as a leader right? in this. And I think it's really exciting to see. To me, she's probably one of the best people to lead. I mean, there, there's there been times where she has led, and I agree with that 100%. Yeah, it just, like, I don't know, when when you look at someone like Cyclops versus Storm, you're like, well... Storm should probably be the leader. <laughs> well, the thing that I do like about what the show is doing is that it's showing our characters in the best light. Mm -hmm. The light that we know them as, the light that we want to see them in, the best of themselves. But it's also showing the truer side of them or the things that they go through. Storm and Cyclops are going through huge things in the show so far. And I love that we're getting that because they also get these moments where they can teach us or show us like, this is how you can overcome it. This is how I overcame it. So good. Yeah. The X-Men are amazing. <laughs> they really are. And, you know, again, thinking about how both of these storylines in this episode end, right? But mm -hmm. also the thought of these two characters who were just looking to escape for a second, right? Mm -hmm. And they can't, right? We have that conversation between uh, Charles and Lalandra. And he's like, you know, when most people get married, they go off to an island. And then once she is back to her power and Forge is feeling better, he says, what do you want to do? Do you want to go off to a sandy island? And you have to wonder if the island that they're thinking about is Genosha yep. for them to only learn that it has been destroyed. Yep. At the, like, the same time, same kind of way. Ugh. Whenever Forge turned on the TV, I was like, oh, fantasy done. Just when they wanted to relax. Paradise, no more. No. <laughs> These poor people, they've just been through hell. Just for existing. Yeah. And now they have to face this. There yeah. is no moment to rest. There is no moment to enjoy. Ooh, I'm very curious to see what happens in the next episode. So not to forget to mention this, we do see who is behind the attack in Genosha, which I like had an inkling, but I was very surprised. We got a little bit of Sinister in episode three. Turns out Sinister was behind the attacks on Genosha, um, which are awful. He used Trask to get access to Master Mold to activate it to then do this. But the scariest thing is, he says this is but a prologue and what's to come. I don't like that. Mm. So to rewind a little bit, and the reason why I didn't mention this, so every time in the intro changes a little bit depending on what's happening. Nightcrawler getting a title card. I'm happy. He bamfs right I'm in there. I'm so happy. He's finally on the team. At what cost? A lot. I'm not going to say worth it, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy he has a title card. Oh. But <laughs> in, the t in the opening sequence, we do see some things. Apocalypse has been kind of shown in multiple of them, which I think is really interesting. So I'm thinking there might be some type of conspiracy or a bigger thing or more people at play. Mm. because. While Sinister is very conniving and has lots of resources and can do a lot of things, I don't think he's working alone. And I, or I don't think that he's going to be the only one working to destroy or whatever or gain something from this. Apocalypse could be involved. Nimrod could be, definitely probably be involved. Master Mold, Bastion. Like, I, I feel like there's going to be a lot of people involved by the end of this, and it's not going to be good. Yeah. Because you have to remember, too, it's like we have multiple seasons that are kind of, in the can for this already so for it it can't be sinister the whole time mm -hmm. right so yeah i'm i'm really <laughs> thinking just about the minutia of sinister's plan in the sense that what's next right so so is was the plan to take down most of mutant kind so that they can no longer defend the earth and he can take it over who knows right i don't know what's the dealio oh he likes to experiment he likes to do things he likes uh, he wants to be the best. I have no, like at yeah. this point, like sinister could get, depending on which sinister you get could be any type of way. Like, is this the one that just wants to watch the world burn and he hates the X-Men possibly? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm concerned. 
of I what's think to we, come. we should all be concerned. <laughs> and I'm so I, I, you know, I can only think that in the next episode, we're going to have both Professor X and Storm returning to the X Men that are still at the mansion and then going from there. But yeah. what is from there? Yeah. I think the whenever we get like some more Genosha stuff is going to be interesting. There's going to be a lot more politics and worldly politics involved because that's always going to be in the background, right? When Forge turned on the TV, freaking Trish was like, <laughs> freaking Trish, freaking Trish was like, nations that those mutants came from, they're not letting them in. So, anyway, yeah, back so to you in sports. <laughs> where does that leave these mutants? Are they all just going to be at the mansion? <laughs> Which is, it's so fucked up to think. Like, I, I feel like obviously this could happen. Um, has happened, but it's like these people went somewhere where they're going to be accepted and to finally have a nation of their own. He gets obliterated mm -hmm. within a week of it opening. And then when they tried to be like, we, I can't live here because it's destroyed. Those people are like, mm, you went, you left. I mean, that's humanity. The, I mean, it's awful. It, it the X-Men is just a supercharged version of our real world yeah I mean, let's be honest that's yeah. that's it i don't like it i mean no. i love it but i don't like it i yeah. like the powers <laughs> well i wish i think our world might be a little easier if we had powers it was this episode was really interesting to think about like most of the soap that we got was with lalandra and xavier space soap yeah we got space soap um but like storm and forge it wasn't really just like super soapy you no, know? not at all. It was very intense. It was a, it was an interesting mix. Of I an think, episode. and I, I think we needed that, right? Yeah. It was like the space stuff was too sweet and we needed the salty, you know, to balance it out. <laughs> yeah. And we got it. Also, Storm brought it. I do want to point out that Derek looks very much like he's wearing Storm's colors. <laughs> looks like it. <laughs> Is like it. I also want to point out that you can't see it, but Noah's wearing short shorts like Ford. I am. <laughs> <gasps> Wow. Not you planned. Mean, not planned. Not planned at all. Yeah. But I got these puppies and I said, I know exactly what I'm wearing them. <laughs> all right. So final thoughts. Like, final thoughts. Do you have anything that you want to mention that we haven't? No, I just am very curious to see where we go from here. We have we we have an a, a team that is devastated in one sense, but then is going to get two of its members back. It's yeah. gonna be very confusing. Yeah. I, I liked it. I, some people are calling it a filler episode. I don't think so. Because um, mm. these characters had development and it pushed the story in a certain direction that I feel like is going to play out through the rest of the, the series, probably. I like that we got a step away from what happened to Genosha to really see how we feel about it and just, like, just get a breather for a second because it was so intense. Um, I mean, this show keeps getting better and better. And again, no notes. This episode wasn't as funny as some of the other mm. episodes, but I'll take it. Yeah, I think that this episode did what it had to do yeah. in bringing these characters back. And uh, seeing Xavier in that whole armor, pretty cool. I got a little nervous. I thought they changed his face. I thought he got plastic <laughs> surgery at first. I didn't know that it was a, a mask. You will be a bird man now. Yeah, she said, Ka -ka. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Moira. <laughs> All right. Oh. So um, next week. We have Dead Boy Detectives. We have a review of season one coming out. So listen to that before you watch it, after you watch it. How do you feel about spoilers? We will be spoiling that whole season, the first Absolutely. season. Absolutely. I will say, watch it. Yeah. <laughs> Not breaking any embargoes. Watch it. Watch it. <laughs> All right. So till next week. Oh, yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>